this, our learners will need a different set of skills to thrive and be successful. It is in our hands as educators to create innovative teaching and learning experiences that will prepare the youth for all the uncertainties that lay ahead, whether it's for classroom, distance, or blended learning. We at DIWA are committed to help you create innovative teaching and learning experiences with DIWA 5G. Let's explore DIWA 5G! DIWA 5G is designed to provide students with rich learning experiences. DIWA 5G inspires educators to be creative and productive amplifying the power of schools to change lives. DIWA 5G textbooks provide a clear roadmap for grade and subject-specific learning goals. They are designed to give teachers and students clarity on key concepts and core ideas through structured content, enhanced interactive features, and additional resources. And to help teachers with their synchronous and asynchronous classes, DIWA 5G textbooks include the, the Teacher's Guide, a modular approach to flexible learning delivery, a tool that contains teaching instructions and student assessments for online and offline learning delivery. Next up, DIWA 5G magazines are Supplemental Educational Magazines or SEPs. They are as informative as textbooks but are more appealing and less intimidating to students because of their format and their capability to deliver manageable chunks of information that result in higher knowledge retention. With enhanced accessibility and enriched interactivity, these educational magazines help learners develop new ideas and conduct profound investigations. We also have DIWA 5G Systems, which is general e-learning, a complete and safe learning management system. It is loaded with the interactive multimedia content and equipped with collaboration tools and the robust support service that meet the changing education ecosystem and its stakeholders. And lastly, DIWA 5G Assessment is Checkbox. To ensure the integrity of learning continuity, DIWA's online gamified assessment portal makes possible a productive exchange of instructional feedback between teachers and students. With ready-made and customized drills and activities found in the platform, DIWA 5G Assessment helps students achieve mastery in different subject areas while keeping them excited and interested. All of these DIWA 5G educational resources make richer teaching and learning experiences because of these five qualities. Engaging Flexible Enriching and relevant. That's the 5G. 5G education evolve.
rights on mute. Always keep muted, except when you want to ask questions or you are asked to speak. This will prevent background noise from disrupting the proceedings. Likewise, if your camera is on, please be aware of your movements. Turn your camera off if you intend in leaving or standing up for a while. Now for the guidelines for a virtual photo booth. Take a selfie and win. How to participate. Before the start of the program and during session breaks, the moderator announces the schedule of selfie time and the availability of the CNGA 2021 virtual photo booth link will be in the Zoom chat box and Facebook Live comment section. Take a selfie with the MC or speaker on the computer screen. It's asked to like and follow the official CEAP NCR Facebook page and subscribe to CEAP NCR official YouTube channel. Uploads his or her picture on Facebook using the hashtags, hashtag CEAP NCR and hashtag CNGA 2021. Upon verification of the delegates following and subscription to the official CAPNCR's FB page and YouTube channel, the Secretariat or the CNGA 2021 Steering Committee endorses and reveals the name of one winner per day towards the end of the last learning session. Post the name of the winner in the official CAPNCR Facebook page and communicates with the winner on how to claim the prize of 1,000 pesos worth of GCash. Some disclaimer for all eligible entries. One, must be a school personnel and or student of CAPNCR member schools. Two, must be in agreement that CAPNCR is authorized to handle the posting of pictures on any of the CAPNCR social media networks must be on a public account at the time that the entry is submitted for the contest.
Okay, good afternoon and welcome to our learning session. Pa extra naman tayo, ensuring learning engagement through meaningful co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based programs. Today is such a great day and we're very happy to be with all of you. I am Charm Esteban. And I'm Eduardo Salamera, and we are your moderators for this afternoon. Ms. Charm, there are just so many things to look forward to in this session, don't you think? One, we can definitely expect insightful presentations from our resource persons, plus a Q&A portion. Two, e-certificates will be given to all the participants of this webinar. And three, we will have an interactive raffle draw where amazing prizes await. Definitely, Sir Ed. So to begin today's event, let us call on Dr. Maria Salome B. Aguinaldo, CEAPNCR Basic Education Committee Archdiocese and Representative, Kalookan Malolos, for opening prayer to be followed by the welcome message from Mrs. Debbie Amzon, Vice Chair for the Senior High School Basic Education Committee of CEAPNCR. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this learning session. We lift up to you our resource speaker and everyone here present. Help us engage in meaningful discussion and allow us to grow closer as a group. Fill us with your spirit and strengthen our commitment to the ministry you have entrusted to us. Constantly remind us that all we do here today all the decisions that we make and all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for your greater glory, and for the love of the academic community, especially the students whom you called us to serve. We make this prayer through Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon to all. One year of virtual schooling has passed and we all can confidently say we did overcome difficulties and successfully ventured into the relatively unknown. We were able to hurdle through the barriers on the usual face-to-face -face schooling in the pandemic that is indeed historical and life-changing. Among those decided on last year were the selection of learning management systems for online learning, the shift from face-to-face -face classes to a highly technical mode, the assessment and support to the readiness or lack of it among students and families to the new ways of schooling, the setting up of new procedures for online classroom, the formulation of new ways of evaluating learning and classifying many other school matters as essentials or non-essentials. Some good practices, unfortunately, had to be temporarily shelved. The global trend in educational systems prioritized student learning, a dire desire to sustain academic standards to ensure students' holistic development. But not all students' needs were met. In this pandemic, not all schools have the resources to sustain a normal setting. Not all students have the opportunity to express their needs, or maybe these students would need help to identify their real needs. Not all families, too, might have an understanding of what the essentials are for these growing up kids who are now confined in their homes without the usual and varied types of interaction normal to their age. 
not many among us would know what or how to ensure the student's general health or wellness. The first year of ODL is a significant learning experience for all. It provided us that opportunity or that image of what might have been missed. As schools prepared for this academic year, 2021-2022, the online distance learning the second time around, questions need to be answered and needs must be reassessed and met. What more can be done for our young? What aspects of student life were left behind as the shift to online learning or modular learning became inevitable? How are students coping given the class time for school life on their screens, tablets, or phones, and not able at all to meet in person their schoolmates, friends, best pals, or favorite teachers? Could there be more life in a virtual school? So, we welcome you to this webinar. Pa extra naman tayo. Our gathering today shall present to you alternatives in the pursuit of balance in the academic and social life of the students. We hope to provide you with exemplars or good practices, best practices of selected member schools as they ventured into the first online distance learning with co-curricular, extracurricular, and learning interest-based learning programs. We hope that our school administrators, activities coordinators, teachers, and students shall find meaningful experiences from this webinar that consequently may encourage other models to rise in their schools to further students' full life in this school year, develop their leadership skills, recognize their giftedness, and enhance the collaborative spirit among the young to thrive within the virtual campus. We hope that all CAP schools shall be able to realize their co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based programs. We welcome you all, CAP member schools, to Pa Extra Naman Tayo. Thank you very much, Dr. Aguinaldo, for the beautiful prayer, and Mrs. Camzon for your warm, warm welcome message. Now let us get to know the officers of the CEAP NCR Basic Education Committee. Our CEAP NCR Basic Education Officers. Chairperson, Mr. Jose Ramel Javier, Director for Administration, LaSalle Green Hills. Vice Chairperson, Junior High School, Mr. Clifford Esteban, IBID Principal, St. Joseph's College, Quezon City. Vice Chairperson, Senior High School, Mrs. Deborah L. Yamzon, former high school principal, Immaculate Conception Academy, Green Hills, yours truly. Secretary, Mrs. Carlota Dilagan, Vice Principal, Senior High School, St. Pedro Poveda College, Quezon City. For our treasurer, we have Mrs. Olga O. Pagia, grade school principal, San Sebastian College, Recoletos, Manila. For our auditor, we have Mrs. Evangeline P. De Peralta, National Coordinator, Education and Emergencies, De La Salle, Philippines. Our diocesan representatives, let's start with Manila. Mr. Eduardo Salamera, Principal, Santa Clara Parish School and Ermita Catholic School, Manila. In Cobal, we have Ms. Lina B. Mercado, SBED Academic Coordinator, St. Mary's College, Quezon City. For Caloocan and Malolos, we have Dr. Salome B. Aguinaldo, Head, Academic Affairs and College Dean of Colegio de San Gabriel Arcangel of Caloocan. From Paranaque, Mr. J.J. N. Jacinto, Director for La Salian Mission, De La Sal Santiago Zobel. And Navaliches, we have Mr. Ronan Paguntalan, Catholic Christian Formation Coordinator, Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic School. In Antipolo, we have Ms. Nanita Q. Veloria, Senior High School Principal, Cainta Catholic College, Cainta Rizal. And Pasig, we have Dr. Asuncion S. Cansana, Principal, Escuela Católica de San Sebastián. Thank you. Good afternoon to all.
Thank you, Mrs. Yamzon. Uh, Sir Ed, no, as you said a while ago, this afternoon is really packed with activities. We will listen to student sharers tell us about their reflections and experiences about being part of different virtual activities in school. And we have presenters who will talk about how they have managed to continue offering co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based activities in their respective schools. It's really amazing how despite the change of learning modality, schools have continued conducting student activity programs in various forms. That is true, Tom. After all, academics is not the be all and end all of education. We believe that pure classroom instruction cannot fully satisfy the growing need to provide learners with opportunities for practical learning and proper channeling of potentials and interests. It is the belief in the importance of exposing and preparing young people to face the realities of life that we design various programs and activities, all of which hopefully will help them become more well-rounded individuals and engaged citizen stewards of our country. And as Catholic institution of learning and formation, that is our contribution to the world. Well said, Sir Ed. Now, before we begin with the presentations, please allow us to thank our generous sponsors. CAPNCR would like to thank the following. Gold sponsors, Diwa Publishing. Odilo Philippines. Vibal Group. Leaves Publishing. And Chan would also like to thank our silver sponsors. Thank you to Abiva Publishing House and Don Bosco Press. We also would like to thank Phoenix Publishing House and of course, Techno Kids. The Inteligente Publishing Incorporated and Rex Education. Sibs Publishing House and Vicarish Publication and Trading. Of course, we'd also like to thank Tech Factors Incorporated. Yes, and we also have our bronze sponsors. Thank you very much to Johnny and Hansel Publications, Dreambooks Publications, and Exalandia IT Services. Once again, thank you to our generous sponsors. At this point, let us now begin our presentations, starting with our student shares. Let us welcome Sandra Feliz Limhenko, grade 10 student from Kainta Catholic College. Life is full of surprises. Last year, a new method of learning was introduced to us, a method that a lot of us were unfamiliar with. But as I have just said, life is full of surprises. Good day everyone! I am Sandra Feliz Limhenko, a student from Kainta Catholic College, and I will be sharing with you my thoughts and realizations about the co-curricular activities we did last school year 2020 to 2021, the new normal way. Well, at first, I found it very challenging. Maybe just like other students, there were many doubts and questions in my head like, what if my connection went bad? Will my teacher give me considerations? Or, 
What if the pictures and videos of my activities have low quality? Will it affect my grade? The adjustment period was hard because before, there were no issues when it came to devices. Our books and pens were enough for us to learn. If we have questions or clarifications, we have our teachers by our side. If things seem to bring us down, we have our classmates and friends to cheer us up. But today, we are facing the new normal. Cliché as it may be, but it is true. Learning must not stop. I continued my journey even if it's just virtual. Given the new normal setup, we still strive to enjoy the whole school year with the help of our parents and guardians and of course our teachers, we were able to accomplish various tasks virtually. I clearly remember one of the memorable activities I've experienced. We had a theatrical play. I was expecting that it was to be performed inside the auditorium with the audience waiting for us. But because of the pandemic, it was not put into reality. Instead, I was tasked to memorize the script and had to film by myself. Moreover, I never thought that I will be given a chance to practice my songwriting skills. For me, it was so unusual and inconvenient because usually, activities like this are done with group mates. Furthermore, we were tasked to do a video about our advocacy. Honestly, these activities brought fear in me. What if I'm bad in following instructions? What if they didn't do what I want for our video? Then it will turn into a mess, right? But you know, this is where my realizations came. Looking back on my outputs, I became proud of myself. Who would have thought that my worries would have great outcomes? I was able to act as Juliet with an imaginary Romeo. I also got to compose a song by myself. I never imagined all my hard work will be paid off. In the end, it feels great to accomplish these activities even though I was confined in the four corners of my room at home. <laughs> I have learned that no matter how difficult things are, we just need to set a goal and we must keep going. Kainta Catholic College taught me that I should believe in myself in every way I can. It is a reality to face difficulties and it is fine to get tired but retreating and stopping are different stories and should not be parts of our vocabulary. It came to my mind that amidst the current situation we are facing, we can still learn. Education gives us what we deserve. I look forward to the next school year of online classes with excitement and optimism. I still want to experience the co-curricular activities that gave me a hard time. And I'm excited to face the hardships that will teach me values in life to be to be a better version of myself. So, to all my fellow students out there, do not be afraid because the sleepless nights and pop times will always be worthy at last. Thank you everyone! There you go. Thank you, Sandra. Truly, we agree with you as educators that learning must not stop and does not need to be boring despite our current situation. So now, we will listen to Maika Erika Makalalag from St. Paul's College, Pasi Grade School Gift Program. This pandemic has prevented not only professionals from participating in sports and other activities, but also students like me who has dreams of becoming one. 
It has placed a barrier between me and my chance at experiencing the thrill of a real physical training, thus reaching my full potential. Despite all this, St. Paul College Pasig, standing true to their high standard of holistic development, has continued to support young athletes like me in pursuing my God-given talents through one of the country's most comprehensive talent development programs in basic education. The Gift or the Giftedness Instruction for Talent Development Program. It is where students get the chance to nurture, refine, and showcase their skills. At last, a glimpse of hope. Now, you must be intrigued. Why did SPCP push through with the Gift Program despite the pandemic? How did we do it? How did we get through it? Let me share with you my challenging yet inspiring volleyball online training journey. I looked forward to my regular Saturday synchronous trainings. I met with my teammates and coaches online for an hour. I had the quality time to refine my skills and be corrected and instructed by my coaches on the spot. The drills and exercises were properly designed that it could be done independently even in a small space. We were also encouraged to use whatever is available in our home. I used water bottles for weights, rolled socks as imaginary wall, and the wall as a net. I became resourceful and creative. My coaches and parents also made sure that I had a safe environment. Most importantly, I got to do it together with the people who share the same passion with me, even if they were only through the screen. I never imagined it was possible, but it was, and it is, definitely. What about the asynchronous activities? My coach has sent a strength and conditioning program, which we needed to do at least two to three times a week to keep us in shape. We needed to upload our videos weekly, doing some ball drills and conditioning exercises. Sometimes, we were also asked to do some tasks and reflections. Of course, it wasn't a smooth ride. Erratic internet, limited space and resources, lack of motivation, challenging drills and exercises. But through it all, my support of parents, the gift team, my coaches and teammates never ceased to guide and motivate me. I found family, something that helped me get through these very trying times. I was hopeful. I thought I learned a lot already in the past years where I got to train physically. But this online training surprisingly taught me a lot more. I learned to be resilient and accountable. I needed to adapt to the new setting which was completely a turnaround to what I was used to. No court, no teammates, no competitions. But I needed to adjust. I need to be honest that I did the drills correctly and religiously. To be patient and to trust the process that all of the sacrifices in this online training would be useful in my future endeavors as an athlete. I held tightly to this idea and that kept me to show up, to work hard, and to push myself to the limit. Every day, our coaches would flash this quote at the beginning of our training. You won't always be motivated, therefore you must be disciplined. I must admit that there were times I lacked motivation, especially in this situation. Usually, I needed other people like my coaches, parents, and teachers to motivate and inspire me. Although, I need to remember that they wouldn't always be there or wouldn't always have the time to help me. My motivation must come from within. Though there were days that I didn't have it, discipline comes in. This was two of the most valuable things that I learned during this online training. Internal motivation and discipline. Yes, anything is possible, physically or online. The pandemic shouldn't be a reason for us to stop. It might be a pause, but definitely not a complete stop. As Pope Francis said, Dear young people, do not bury your talents. The that do not be afraid to dream of great things. Training online was not a time wasted. It was a golden time that we took to nourish ourselves and nurture our God-given talents. It was all worth it. I am proud that I am one of the graduates of the first ever online gifts program. I myself couldn't even believe it. I made it! Through God's love and mercy, I, I got through it. 
this pandemic didn't hinder me from pursuing my passion. I didn't only polish my fundamental skills, but I learned essential values that I will carry with me in the future. We'll never know if we don't try, right? As PCP did it, which means you can do it too. Together, with creativity, resilience, resourcefulness, and discipline, anything is possible. There is hope. Thank you, Micah. Indeed, there's no limit with creativity, as we have seen in your sharing. Continue to stay optimistic. Now, we will hear from Juan Lucas Antonio Buenaflor, a grade six student from St. Mary's College of Quezon City. Pleasant afternoon to everyone. Praise be Jesus and Mary. I am Juan Lucas Antonio Benaflor, a grade 11 humanities and social science student, an SMCQC Alumni Foundation Incorporated Scholar, an academic achiever, and a student leader of St. Mary's College, Quezon City. Ever since I was in the elementary level, I have already been exposed to the engaging environment of the school. I have witnessed the various co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based activities of the school, which have contributed to my growth as an Ignatian Marian leader of faith for excellence and service. The club organizations and training programs that I used to attend are now part of remarkable memories that I long to experience again. Memories because these challenging times have greatly affected how we were able to continue doing what we were doing before all uncertainties and struggles in our society came into light. Ever since the pandemic began, we were disconnected from the people and things we love. Disconnected from our families, friends, hobbies, and interests. We are all experiencing difficulty in pursuing these things, especially through the virtual world, where we have limited opportunities to interact due to the digital divide and other forms of inequalities. However, in response to the demands of the new normal, St. Mary's College, Quezon City has persevered to provide its learners a chance to reconnect with each other and with their hobbies through the online interest groups. These online interest groups or OIGs create situations and opportunities that ensure maximum development of creativity, individual talents, and potentials. These OIGs are offered to grades 1 to 12 pupils and students of SMCQC. Some of these include Ignatian Marian Council, Asian Pop Fanatics, Creative Writing 2.0 and Public Speaking, Dance and Dazzle, Doodle Arts Basic and Advanced, Entrepreneur's Circle, Esports Buddies, Happy Animal Keepers, Little and Teen Chefs, Social Media Influencers, and a lot more. For the past year and counting, our then club organizations and now OIGs have continuously strengthened our Christian formation inspired by Ignatian spirituality, our sense of leadership, stewardship, social consciousness, and interest for global competence through the use of different platforms and technologies along with our own advocacies for the common good of our society. Having been an Ignatian Marian for more than a decade already, even experiencing ODL, I am one of the many proud students who can claim that despite the occurrence of this pandemic, we are fortunate enough to be given the chance to express ourselves and to continue our passion through the school's various online activities. 
OIGs have provided us new learning experiences that even the face-to-face -face setup could not teach us. And that is the importance of reconnecting with the people and things we love. Yes, it is not always an easy path. Many times, we feel exhausted, tired, and anxious. But at the end of the day, it is our passion, dedication, and interest that keep us moving forward. Let us embrace the challenges of joining online interest organizations or groups and interest-based programs and be more engaged in the varied and meaningful activities. Aside from saying, pa-extra naman tayo, I would also like to say, tara, sali tayo upang mas lalong matuto at maging vivo. Amidst the pandemic, our school is profoundly committed to nurture faith, build passion for excellence, and develop compassion for service among its learners. I am an Ignatian Marian of St. Mary's College, Quezon City, a school that is not only ODL ready, but a school which pushes us to fly high through its online extracurricular and interest-based programs and activities. Wow, Lucas, watching your sharing made us feel that we are not missing out on a lot after all. And dami dami palang pwedeng gawin. Uh, <laughs> despite our situation. So thank you once again, Sandra, Micah, and Lucas. Charm? Thank you very much to our student sharers. It's very refreshing, no, Sir Ed, to hear them talk about their experiences. It makes us sigh with relief that all of our hard work as teachers does pay off. Now let's proceed to the main event of this session. But first, allow us to introduce our distinguished resource persons. Our first speaker's journey as a Lasallian started in 2002 when he became faculty in charge of De La Salle Santiago Zabel's high school exposure program. He then headed the social action office. Today, he continues to leave out St. Lasalle's mission as director of the Lasallian Formation and Mission Department at De La Salle Zabel to share his, his presentation on extracurricular activities. Let us all welcome Mr. JJ N. Jacinto. Our next speaker, Mrs. Lucille Ariet Bautista, is currently the head of the English Department and the Research Planning Communications and Promotions Office of the Manila Cathedral School and Archimedes Clusters 5 and 6. She is also part of the technical working group of the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila Educational System on the Curriculum Development Project 2021. In 2018, she presented a paper during the first Singapore Institute of Multidisciplinary Professions Research Festival, and she published her research in Ascendance Asia Journal of Multidisciplinary Research abstracts. Friends, once again, Mrs. Lucille Ariet Bautista. Last but not the least, our third speaker is currently the Basic Education Academic Coordinator and the Senior High School Coordinator of the Immaculate Conception Parochial School in Malabon City. She has served as resource person in various training such as teaching and learning methods and assessments for senior high school. To give us an insight on interest-based activities, let us all welcome Ms. Charlene T. Villaluna. Thank you very much to our host for the introduction. Thank you, Sayop NCR, for inviting me this afternoon to share our initiatives in Dela Zalzubel. Good afternoon, fellow educators and formators. The COVID-19 pandemic radically and tremendously changed the way our young people have been educated in our country. 
as the Salian educators opening the academic year 2020-2021, three months after the lockdown, was honestly speaking disorienting and limiting. The most essential question that we considered when we opened the school year was how to provide a rich, meaningful, and engaging experience to all our students who are now without traditional teachers standing in front or beside them in a regular classroom setup. Migrating face-to-face -face classes to online platform is not something new to us because De La has been uh, has seven years of head start with online classes. The school has been able to pivot to a blended model, giving online learning tools and proper professional development of its faculty. In fact, DLSE has been selected by Apple Incorporated as an Apple Distinguished School for its continuous innovation in learning, teaching, and the school environment since 2016, and has also been recognized as a Microsoft Showcase School since 2017. But even if we're quite prepared for it, we still have a lot of birth, pa birth pains adjusting to full online distance learning. While academic excellence is at the forefront of this new normal in education, as a Lasallian school, we believe that there are non-negotiables when it comes to the kind of education that we offer to our students. We need to provide not only quality education, but also a genuine Lasallian formation at all costs. And so we ask ourselves these three questions. How do we make our school more responsive to the needs of our students in this time of pandemic? How do we adjust our system that meets students where they are in order to have a genuine opportunity to learn and develop? And how do we adjust and redesign formation programs that will provide a holistic, integral, and transformative human and Christian education for distance learners? As part of our school's goal to promote balance, relevant, and progressive learning, our school has decided to have a four-day online classes weekly, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday for academics, while Wednesday is non-academic day. Wednesday was allotted for activities that promote students' wellness and overall health. So we called it Wellness Wednesday. We anticipated a surge in mental health concerns during this pandemic. We aimed at reaching out to our students who may have been gravely affected by COVID-19. Students who are possibly anxious about the loss of the structure of regular schooling, those who worry about parents or relatives working as frontliners, and those who lost their loved ones and friends. This was the reason why Activities on Wellness Wednesday are focused on integrated formation and support to provide them a safe learning environment. The following units sharing the Wellness Wednesday schedule are the Students' Clubs and Activities Office, the Campus Ministry Office, the Social Action Office, the Cultural Affairs Office, the Sports Development Office, School Counseling Office, and Learning Resource Center. Led by the Student Clubs and Activities Office, or SCOW, these seven units provided opportunities for character formation and active leadership through different programs to promote a healthy balance of academics and extracurricular activities, which is an important key to a successful and meaningful student life. In De La Salzubel, extracurricular program is one that encourages students' participation outside of normal classroom time to address and meet their interests. It complements the academic programs of the school towards their holistic development. We have three major extracurricular programs online. First is our student government, which we call as SRCC. We have three student councils in Dallas Zolzobel, namely the grade school SRCC, the Day High School SRCC, and the Brother Rafael Donato Knight High School SRCC. We believe that there's still a need to provide a representation for our students online, that through the Student Council, students are still able to bring out their concerns to the school administration and be given the opportunity to fulfill their roles as leaders of the student body. 
the same type of opportunities they have on a physical campus. It is our hope that the COVID-19 crisis has provided a specially unique setting for our student leaders to develop a new model for student leadership and governance online. Our second program is the clubs and organizations. At first, we are quite hesitant of having them last academic year, but we, we pushed through with it because we wanted them to somehow have a certain level of normalcy as it gives them the opportunity for growth as a student community. We thought we could not do it, but we were able to almost migrate all our clubs and organizations online. We just added new clubs that are unique and born out of our ODL setup. So far, last academic year, we have a total of 23 clubs for grade school, 46 clubs and organizations for the day high school, and 17 clubs for the night high school. Our clubs and organizations are divided into three categories. Let me give you an example. For leadership and religious clubs, we have Girl Scouts to social action volunteer groups with a lot of religious groups being affiliates of our campus ministry office. Various clubs under the music and arts category are digital art, media, calligraphy, theater, modern dance, ballet, plus music clubs such as chorale, strings, band, rondalia, and others which are under the cultural affairs office. For games and sports, we do have a few online gaming clubs like Mobile Legends, but we also have dance and fitness clubs, basketball, floorball, judo, and aikido clubs. Aside from the sports clubs, we also have a separate group for our student athletes. These are our varsity teams that's handled by the Sports Development Office. Our 800 plus student athletes are divided into 37 varsity teams in 18 sports. We continue their physical training and conditioning online to keep them in their tip top shape. Allow me to share with you how we adjusted these programs in our ODL setup. As for our club moderators, who are mostly teachers, this was not in any way part of their assigned work or teaching load. Being a club moderator is voluntary, but we made sure that they still get modest monetary compensation for their time and hard work. We also significantly lessened the documents that we required them to submit, and everything was done online. We mainly use Google Drive, including Google Docs, Sheets, and forms for documentation and submission. For attendance and grading system, joining clubs and organizations is not required. Attendance is optional and not graded. Our students are encouraged to attend the same clubs and organizations for the entire school year, but they are also allowed to attend more than one club provided that's not in conflict with their academic tasks. We use online exit pass where the students answer them before they leave the club meeting which serve as their attendance and evaluation of their club experience. The same exit pass is filled out with the club moderators. For club meeting and training, grade school um, club meetings held at first and third Wednesday of the month. High school club meetings are held every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, while the night school held it every Wednesday. 40 minutes is the standard time for club meeting, but we allow them to exceed for as long as it won't affect their academic tasks. For student athletes, our coaches conduct their trainings four to six hours a week after class. As for the online platforms used for club meeting and training, Google Classroom and Google Meet are mostly used, but others also use Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Regarding the schedule of our clubs and our organizations, these are included in the weekly schedule and study plan that are posted and sent online by the level coordinators, the students, and parents. The list contains the details of the clubs and organizations, including the links that students may simply click in order to attend the meetings of their preferred clubs. We also issued the media release form to our parents and guardians at the start of the school year and, re and request them to sign it to allow the school to use videos and photos of their children 
in all the materials we publish and post online. For any club or organization which has an activity online outside the weekly schedule posted by the level coordinators, we still seek the approval of the parents and guardians by requiring them to sign the parental consent form. Activities and projects are still encouraged in ODL setup. We follow the same process that we have prior to the pandemic. Students are required to submit activity or project proposals which are reviewed and approved by the concerned school authorities using online tools. The same process is observed for fundraising activities. Monetary donations are facilitated and collected by a fund transfer and GCash using the school's official accounts. While in-kind donations are received through our designated spaces in school and drop-off areas outside the village where school is located for easier access. Of course, like everybody else, we also encountered some challenges while we are implementing our programs. We have two major challenges last year. One is the attendance. Students' participation are, are impressive during the first term, but it, it began to decrease in the second and third terms. The reason for the gradual decline was because of the academic tasks. Students have a lot of requirements to finish and submit. As a result, Wellness Wednesday became an extension of their school and their academics, and some just, you know, spent the day, the, the day to rest and sleep, which is actually not a waste of time, but a form of wellness too. And the second one, I am sure you would agree with me. Internet connectivity. It does not need any further explanation, right? Because we all experience this. Despite of these challenges, I'm still elated because we have a lot of reasons to be thankful for. While virtual club activities may not provide the same connection, feelings, and outputs as to the in-person setup, the students still felt very happy when they attended club meetings as it helped them cope with the impacts of the pandemic. Accomplishments, reflections, evaluations of students revealed the following benefits to them. They said that it provided a breather and balance from their academic tasks. The virtual club meetings, activities, and trainings may not be the same as on a physical campus, but still gave them an outlet from their academic and online classes. It helped them make meaningful interaction with their friends, schoolmates, and teammates. They also learn and grow together. The online clubs and organizations has allowed them to work and collaborate more with each other. Insights from our students revealed that they learned the value of teamwork as it taught them that they were not alone and they have others to support them. They may have faced countless challenges throughout the year, but what's what important was that they overcame them together. They never expected the year ahead of them, but they have learned so much from one another and became stronger together. He said they also were able to make a positive impact in the midst of uncertainties. A lot has happened to our students throughout the year, but one good thing was that even through a screen, they were able to accomplish so much out of their plans. By maximizing the use of social media, online tools, and various applications to pursue their interests, advocacy, and passion, our student councils, including the different clubs and organizations, successfully implemented 97 projects and activities for the entire academic year. Some of the remarkable achievements that they have accomplished so far in our ODL setup are the following. Our first online Vision Mission Week or Foundation Week. De La Salle Subel, I think, is the first basic education school that organized the first Foundation Week. They created and decorated our virtual school using Minecraft. In the LZ, the Vision Mission Week is not run by the school administration. It is organized and managed by the student leaders themselves. The school administrators and the parents' association are just behind the scenes supporting their program.
The strong and active participation of the students in the 39 engaging and exciting three-day activities prepared by our student leaders are indicative of its success because they were able to unite the student body and celebrate the most important tradition of our school as one community. Modesty aside, several LaSalle and non LaSalle schools have met them after to benchmark on this project. While our students grappled with their schedule to complete their academic tasks, I am delighted to tell you that they still did not forget to find time to help those who are most affected with the pandemic, from our own school community to our external partners. They were able to organize seven fundraising projects last year to help them. And they were able to raise ample amount of money to help our agency hired workers, night high school students, partner public schools and communities, hundreds of families in Metro Manila through the Kanoona project of De La Salle Philippines, and for one La Salle scholarship fund. On top of this, they also organized various online outreach activities where they had virtual interactions with the children for our partners' institutions. They also set up an online page called Fair Marketplace to help our employees and agency hired workers to generate additional income by selling their products online. They also sent breakfast meals to the healthcare workers of five hospitals in Montinlupa, Las Piñas, and Paranaque, and also donated learning kits to our partner elementary schools in Batangas. They also supported the school's relief operations for the affected families of Typhoons, Raleigh, and Ulysses in November 2020. Our student leaders also organized activities to guide and accompany their fellow students in addressing their mental health concerns. Student athletes were provided with opportunities for spiritual growth and mental wellness by our sports psychologists and priests so they can adjust and thrive in ODL. Several student organizations facilitated online retreats and gatherings for prayer service and worship. And they even involved members of their families in these activities. They may be young and inexperienced, but their faith is so strong that it radiates hope, love, and positivity. There are also clubs and organizations that were able to join online trainings and conferences, exchange, pro exchange programs, tournaments, and competitions here and abroad. Some even brought home multiple awards. With all the benefits that our students have gained from these programs despite the limitations of ODL and the challenges that we've faced throughout the year, plus the good feedbacks that we received from their parents, ang masasabi lang po namin, Salamat Panginoon, Salamat. Because we are affirmed that what we have done have helped our students thrive in the new normal. That the technology worked at our advantage because we used and maximized it properly. Looking back, we realized that it is not a simple task to promote a healthy balance of academic and non-academic tasks per week while pursuing Lasallian excellence. The challenges were overwhelming, most especially to our students. But with our guidance, trust, and strong support, they could face everything with courage, grit, and determination. With us beside them, they could accomplish things beyond our imagination. We have opened already the academic year 2021-2022 last July 5. And we started our club meetings last August with 32 clubs in grade school, 42 clubs in organizations in the day high school, and 15 clubs in the night high school, and still 37 sports varsity teams. We are far from an ideal school offering extracurricular program, but we commit ourselves to continue providing dynamic opportunities for our students so that they could have more meaningful and engaging connections and life-affirming conversations in the virtual world. We want them to feel that even if they only see each other on screen, they can still create beautiful and lasting memories together, where they found their best, best friends, best bodies, best club, best org, best sports, and best experiences ever. As I end my sharing this afternoon, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow De La Salle Zubel administrations and LaSallean partners 
my team LFMD for their support and ed dedication, most especially the student clubs and activities team, and the student councils for all their hard work in making all these programs possible. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you, Sir JJ, for sharing your insights and best practices from your institution. So Charm, please remind them about the questions that they may have. Yes, Sir Ed, thank you very much, Sir JJ. And I would like to remind everyone or inform you as well that we will have a Q&A no, in a bit no, after the presentation. So please make sure that you drop your questions in the chat box and if uh, possible, to whom do you want to address the questions? Let's now welcome our second resource person, Mrs. Lucille Ariet Bautista. Thank you, Ma'am Charmaine and Sir Ed. So a blessed afternoon, my fellow educators and administrators. Can I see a thumbs up if you are still here? All right, it is my pleasure to share our school's best practices when it comes to giving co-curricular activities in the new normal. So just to give you a brief background, I am from Manila Cathedral School in Tayuman, Manila. So we are under the supervision of our beloved school director, Father Nolan A.K., who happens to be a SEAP NCR Regional Trustee, and Father Nick Celiano Jr., our Assistant School Director. So we were granted PAASCO Level 2 last December 2019, and currently we have 2,874 students from SPED preschool up to grade 12. So we are a big school po. So now, we will be talking about virtual classroom and beyond, the co-curricular activities in the new normal. So since the terms co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based programs and activities are used and defined interchangeably, we, your speakers for today, were tasked to give meaning to these terms as to how our schools define them operationally. So, what are these co-curricular activities? So, well, these are the programs and learning experiences that complement what our students are learning in the regular school curriculum. So, in our school, these are the tasks which can be used as either formative or summative assessments in connection to the learning competencies which are integrated in our usual monthly celebrations, events, or even holidays. So last year, even if we encountered a lot of adjustments due to the pandemic, we really tried our best to still give co-curricular activities to our students. So, of course, as educators, we only do things which will benefit our learners, right? So, here are some of the known benefits of curricular or co-curricular activities. So, first is to draw out the best potentials of our learners. And then next is, of course, to ensure that students are exposed to practical tasks outside the classroom. Then last on my list is, of course, to give balance between curricular and co-curricular program. So if you will notice, the word known was highlighted because as you check these benefits, we all know them already, right? But come to think of it, even in the virtual classroom setup, they are also as important as they were in the regular face-to-face -face class. Diba? Agree? Okay, so now, how do we fully get these benefits for our students? So the challenge is up for us, teachers and administrators. So I have here listed eight tips to ace the co-curricular activities based on our experience last school year and early this year. So I have it here. Let's ace it in eight. So first, as cliche as it may sound, we must always begin with the end in mind. 
So what does it mean? I know you are all familiar with this, the diba? since college days. So we have to list down the goals or objectives of our activities. Of course, next is to plan for the following things. So first is the theme of the activity or celebration. Diba? Sometimes we adapt the theme from DepEd or we even make our own themes based on the activities that will be done. So I have here some example graphics that we posted in our Facebook page during various celebrations. So we were able to fully uh, celebrate or virtually celebrate these events last year. So next is to decide the persons involved. So it is best to come up with committees who will take charge of the things to be done. Because, you know, admit it or not, it is harder to conduct activities now that we are all working from home. Diba? Okay, so we have to use our connections in order for us to be successful. So next is to have a flexible schedule of activities. So it is important not to compromise the online classes of both the students and the teachers. So we have to be really mindful of scheduling the activities accordingly. Okay. So next is to plan for the procedures of each activity. So brainstorming of ideas among our co-teachers and administrators is a must for us to have a well thought of activity. And of course, this one is very important as well. We have to propose a budget. So even in this time of pandemic, we must take note of the resources that we will be needing for each activity. So from planning up to the awarding part. So next on our list is of course, we have to seek support from administrators and colleagues. So as educators who want the best for our learners, the support of our administrators and colleagues is of great importance. Yeah, remember that. Okay? So of course, a plan will not materialize without the approval or permissions coming from our administrators. Diba? So please... I myself is an administrator. So we have to be open-minded always. So we have to push our teachers and bring out their bright and creative ideas. So most especially from the younger generation of our teachers. Diba? So they have a lot of ideas to share. So next we have here three big words. So make it creative, interactive, and collaborative. Okay. So first, creative in the sense that activities should unleash learners' creativity and resourcefulness since they are just at home. So through our creative co-curricular activities, our learners will have time to lessen their stress and anxieties coming from academic tasks and other things. So here are some examples of what we did with the pictures. So from cooking, digital arts, crafting materials, up to dressing up to be in character. So, ayan, we have the young scientists and Filipino characters as well. So, of course, since we are in a virtual setup, another thing is to be interactive. So, since we are dealing with technology-inclined technology learners, of course, we can use video communications applications such as Zoom or Google Meet in conducting our activities. So we can also use various social media platforms wherein our learners can showcase their skills and abilities in public. So here are some of the examples that we did. So first, during the celebration of the English Fest, we had the English Online Daily. So in, it is an activity in which the students need to interact and answer questions using the comment section. So we posted it on our Facebook page. And mind you, this is the first time that we got 500 to 1,000 comments, I think, from our students, parents, and even our alumni. So we also make sure 
to commemorate all the events and holidays so that students will still remember them. So here they are encouraged to react or comment as well. And another thing, of course, quiz bees. Yeah, they are always part of our activities. So can I have a heart reaction about this one? Diba? We cannot get away with our quiz bees. So we also took them virtually. So English, math, science, Filipino, quiz bees, name it, we had it. So it was enjoyable though. So lastly is to be collaborative. Here, from informing the parents regarding the activity up to including them in certain points are essential. So since learners are at home, might as well we give them activities which will create more bonding time within the family members. So here the co-curricular activities become more interesting when there is collaboration in the class and in the family. Diba? So here we had our students make masks with their parents and have them document it. So we also tasked them to make videos for mass demonstration with their classmates during our Foundation Week celebration. And another example is when uh, we had our MAPE month. So here we were very amazed. With the turnout of this activity. So we called it social distancing. So here the students and their parents or their siblings gracefully joined the TikTok contest. Yeah. So we already have uh, we already had three. Next on our list is to push for current trends. Of course, we have to use the current trends that our learners will be interested in. So we can try using popular applications, viral posts, and even viral personalities to entice our learners to join our activities. For example, we used um, meme makers, TikTok, Zoom, and even online chess and billiards during our intramural. So students like those activities very much. And you will be shocked with the turnouts of this activity. So aside from dancing, we also had the Awit Tay Maria during the Rosary Month. So it was like a virtual singing contest. And of course, we also had our virtual pageant, the Mr. and Miss MCS, wherein students had a Q&A portion, just like in face-to-face, -face, right? And we were also uh, glad Kasi they were very resourceful with their sports attires, even if they are just at home. So we just had the photos edited for them to have a standard frame and background. Alright. So then we have the fifth one, and this is to integrate activities across subject areas. This is very important as well. So for us to help our learners excel in their curricular and co-curricular tasks, we can do subject integration in our activities. So actually, if you will think of it, we can involve three or more subject areas in conducting co-curricular activities so that all efforts from our learners will be worthy. Diba? All subjects will be checking this certain type of activity. It will be uh, good for both the teachers and the students. So at MCS, during face-to-face -face classes, we call it an institutional project. So we make sure that all subjects will be involved in that certain activity. But for this new normal setup, we find it um, a bit difficult to include all subjects. So we practice at least three subjects integrated in an activity. So for our sixth one, this is exciting for everybody. So let us go for rewards and prizes. So simple rewards and prizes can also make an activity exciting. So we can easily get our students' attention and have them join our activities if we promise them to give rewards or prizes. So last year, we had the following. So first is the performance task points. Yan, masaya na sila dyan, or even exemption to a quiz if they won. So next, we also have the load allowance. We also gave 
the winner's cash prizes through GCash, e-certificates, and even online recognition or posting of their name or photo if they want. They really appreciate those things. So rewards and prizes are of big help. So next, of course, talking about posting, we have to be mindful of the data privacy concerns. Yeah. So in the new normal setup, it is important for us to be knowledgeable with the Data Privacy Act. Before conducting any activity which needs publishing online, we must ensure that the students and their parents are aware of the online privacy rights. Okay, their online privacy rights. So they must give us the permission to post either their names or photos in any of our social media platforms. So this is for the protection of our schools as well. Last but not the least, on my list is, of course, since we are in a Catholic institution, we have to strengthen religious activities further. So, this pandemic is a call for us, Catholic teachers and administrators, to strengthen religious activities. Because this is not only for our learners, but also for their families as well. So, we should make sure that conducting religious activities as part of co-curricular activities in CLED and in other subject areas are consistently done. So, in our school, our school director and assistant school director conducts online masses daily from Monday to Sunday. And then, teachers are checking the students' attendance. So, we still observe class peace day celebrations. So, even their agape is done virtually. So, by posting photos of food, by eating together, even if it's just in Zoom. So, next, we also have the praying of the rosary daily. So, this was done during the rosary month in October. So, personal and students' recollection or Duke and Altum was also conducted. And we also had our first Paritaan Festival or the simultaneous lighting of paroles last December. So, to feel really the spirit of Christmas. So, with all this being said, we already had the eight. And the time is not enough as much as I would like to add some more best practices. So I hope I was able to inspire you with the practices that we have at Manila Cathedral School when it comes to giving co-curricular activities. So yes, of course, we have encountered a lot of difficulties in the virtual setting. So from the planning up to the conduct of these activities. But I'm sure if our aim is for the betterment of our students, we should take the challenge and be inspired to think of the activities which will boost their, the learners' talents, skills, and abilities, even if they are just at home. And so once again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, SEAP NCR, for having me. Okay. And we thank you, Ms. Bautista, for inspiring us with creative activities. So, Char, marami tayong natutunan, no? But uh, that's not the last. So, we will proceed now to our last resource person, Mrs. Charlene Villaluna. Thank you so much to our host for the warm welcome and introduction. On behalf of ICPS, I would like to extend my gratitude to our CAP Bed and CR for this opportunity to share a blessed and safe afternoon to each and everyone. When I received the invitation from our very supportive consultant, Dr. Maria Salome B. Aguinaldo, I told her, Doc, what I'm going to share. It is really my first time that I'm going to speak with thousands of educators and with my thought that most of our participants for sure are much knowledgeable and with experiences than I am. This is only what we have in our school. Yes, I am proud of our school, but ICPS is also experiencing struggles and facing different challenges. Admittedly, I'm afraid to share because at this very moment, we are still in these trying times. However, I have come to realize none of us prepared as the COVID-19 pandemic occurred in which it claimed thousands of lives worldwide. 
The immediate school shutdown to control the spreading of this virus on the latter part of the academic year 2019-2020 had stressed all of us in every aspect of our daily lives. From an educational perspective, it took away re the reassuring costume of our daily physical gathering at school and the comfort that brought by it. Most of the countries have changed their teaching method from face-to-face -face online. Everything was suddenly changed. We had a solitary and sometimes isolated experiences. Aside from the serious health concerns of COVID-19, this may have been the biggest challenge in our educational system. Therefore, I hope this little thing that I'm going to share with you today will help you or even inspire you in this very challenging learning system. To start with, let us talk about our status in our second year in the distance learning. How would you describe distance learning in your school? Is it exciting yet challenging or challenging only? Do we have the same experiences? Take a look at these pictures. Are you still encountering the same scenarios? Do you think these are all normal? The teachers, these are all normal. Yes, having this in our second year in the distance learning are useful. Daily scenarios right now are challenging. However, regardless of the difficulties that we are facing today, we have to pursue our goal. We have to face it with courage and resilience. This is to respond to our goals of bridging the gap between the learners and the new mode of learning. We have to ensure that every student will be given the opportunity to continue their education despite the crisis that we are facing. And I think the most challenging in this new normal system is how are we going to make learning normal in the perspective of our learners. Without a physical classroom, how can we check that students are engaged and progressing? How can we make our daily virtual discussion fun and engaging? When I'm observing classes, I would love to see a happy classroom. This is the most important thing to be observed. When students are happy, they are most likely active, participative, and communicative. This is a manifestation of learning. They are not timid and afraid to share and speak. Most probably, they are excited daily despite that they are not able to interact to one another physically like in the face-to-face -face classes. Question, how are we going to make this happen? Let me share with you how we prepared our curriculum to ensure a quality education in distance online learning. I hope our school will inspire yours to continue our learning journey in these trying times. I am sure we are all in the same boat. Let me discuss the following with you. First, issues and challenges in the implementation of distance learning. ICPS interest-based programs. Steps in implementing interest-based learning. Addressing the students' needs and interests, and lastly, the benefits of interest-based learning. Going back to my previous question, is online distance learning exciting yet challenging or challenging only? The sudden change in the delivery of instruction caused by this pandemic led the school retooling our present curriculum and instruction. Aside from that, our teachers were sent to various webinars and workshops to be more ready and skilled enough to handle online classes. Academic leaders and teachers were comprehensively studied and revisited our curriculum from the mails given by the DepEd to the instruction, management, and assessment. What are the challenges here? How our learners adapt in a new environment? How do we maximize student-teacher and student-to-student -student interaction online? With regards to our class program, how can we use synchronous and asynchronous tools to facilitate the interaction essential for learning? How do we address the technological hubs and have nots? How can we support the delivery of online education? And how do we monitor and authenticate student performance in distance learning? Another challenge is the decision criteria for selecting appropriate distance learning technology. What is the appropriate and friendly user platform for our learners? What will happen to students with poor internet connection? Is the device available for our learner enough for him or her to follow and join with instruction daily? These challenges are definitely common for all of us. 
but the most challenging of all when we are preparing the curriculum is the assurance on its effectiveness in the current system. The implementation itself. Our vision is to make our learners a Christ-centered academically, competent and holistically developed individuals with 21st century skills in order for them to respond to the changing and challenging times. The first year implementation of online distance learning brought us to implement the interest-based learning comprehensively this year. Before we proceed to interest-based learning program, let us discuss first the interest-based learning. Interest-based learning uses children's interests as the basis for curriculum decision-making, which ensures the teaching response to children's strengths, abilities, and interests, leading to engagement and learning. When you are talking about interest-based learning, you need to ask what are the learner's interests. This is, of course, can be accomplished also in a homeschooling education. Homeschooling also allows students to move at their own pace as well. Thus, establishing a program that will enhance their skill is possible. Our senior high school has the following interest-based program, which are established in our Strand Career Interest Organization. These are done and developed comprehensively for the benefits of our learners. The following are the Senior High School Strand Organization. First, we have the ABM Society. These are the uh, organizational objectives, the purpose of establishment, and the mission and vision. We have also the Gas Circle for General Academic Strand Student Organization. For our humanities and social sciences, we have the SCALE, Students Community for Active Leadership. These are the purpose of establishment, the organization objectives, and the mission and vision. For our STEM strand, we have the systematized cluster and rationalizing endeavor. These are the objectives, the purpose of establishment, and the mission and vision. For our institutional organization, we have the Supreme Student Government and Supreme Pupil Government and the Crown. Crown is our school publication. For our future plan, we will continue the implementation of the following academic and interest clubs for grade school and junior high school level. Cultivating interest should not be an afterthought to the typical learning situation. Interest is essential to academic success. Intervention to develop students' interests matter in any educational context but may be most needed in academic domain that many students do not find initially interesting or those domains in which interest typically declines over time. For example, in middle uh, school and high school students, academic interest declined particularly in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM strand. Question, how are we going to implement this interest-based program? First, know the interest among children and use them as a foundation to build your school curriculum. Let us not forget that the main purpose of having our curriculum is for the benefits of our learners. Therefore, they must be the center of our decision making in preparing any programs or activities. Their interest ideally should be one among the many factors to be considered in curriculum design. The main goal of education and learning should be fostered to holistic development. Interest-based learning will be helpful in the holistic development of students and assist in developing critical skills and abilities to be successful and happy in the 21st century life and workplaces, both teachers and students. Second, infuse new ideas and interests or extend current ones for meaningful learning. Infusing new interests or expanding the current scope of interest is important in making learning holistic. As teachers, it is important to infuse new ideas and interests or extend current ones for meaningful learning. Let's say the student is good in writing, then encourage the student to join in other activities that will enhance her or his writing skills. Coaching or mentoring is highly recommended. Let the student explore other fields that will cater his or her interests. Third, prioritize and understand the scope of interest and decide how to respond to it. It is quite normal in today's lifetime for children 
to have varied or multiple interests. Gusto ko ngayon ito, bukas iba naman. Educators have to be selective in supporting students' interests effectively. It's okay to entertain at first because we do understand that there are students who are really blessed for having various talents and intelligences. However, we are talking about their interests. Teachers must be conscious as well that there are learners who are just wanted to impress others, maybe because of pressure caused by peers and sometimes just to please their families. However, they are not enjoying doing this and those. So what will happen after that? Students may not be develop their skills. Sabi nga natin, anumang prutas na pinilit mahinog, mapait or maasim. At anumang relationship na walang pagmamahalan, hindi yan masaya. Therefore, do not let our do not let our students experience this. Every child's interest cannot be addressed at once. Teachers should identify and develop interests that are important rather than working on every temporary interest. I have this observation also in our senior high school students. There are some who turn to shift to another stance at their grade 12 level. Well, what might happen in, if this will continue? Might as well until they reach their college level and decided pa rin sila to what course they are going to pursue and this will lead them to drop and worse not to continue their studies anymore. Number four, develop the kind of assessment and make the learning process more effective. You know already your students' interests and skills. I have, as I have mentioned a while ago, one fits all method is not efficient. Huwag mong paakyatin sa puno ang kabayo at patalunin mo ang pagong. Nakakatawa, hindi ba? Can you imagine the faces of your students while doing their performance tasks when they are just forced to do it for the sake of their grades? But they are not happy. Makikita mo posted si status ng mga bata sa Facebook. Teacher kong sawi sa pag-ibig at galit sa mundo. Or teacher kong ampalaya. Deeper learning is there when students learn something beyond the content and when they can apply their experiences or knowledge gained into real life situation. Number five, understand the role of technology and gadgets in the context of interest-based curriculum and learning. One has to be clear on how technology can be used to foster interest and learning in children. Being selective about the content that is available for children and identifying what interest can be fostered using technology are the key decisions that the teachers have to take in today's world. How would a teacher cater to the individual interests of many students, particularly the newly enrolled students? First, check the student's profile. This will be done with the help and collaboration of our guidance advocates who are in charge in getting their information during the enrollment procedure. Likewise, the information from the previous advisor is highly suggested to be considered too. Second, testing the multiple intelligences. This will be done by various assessments like checking their weaknesses, strengths, and preferences. This will help the teachers to assess and measure students' interests and learning. This will lead them to prepare the learners in the possible and suitable organization or club that will cater their interests systematically. Conducting an interview is another way to support the pieces of evidence got from the assessment. Parents or family may be included to aside from the learners. Next is the admission to club organization. Once the learners are admitted already in the organization or club, they will be given a schedule for coaching or mentoring. Several activities will be given to develop their skills. The following are the benefits of interest-based learning. First, it increases students' academic interest and holistically develops their 21st century skills. Second, it increases students' self-esteem with the school core values, truth, peace, and holistic excellence. Lastly, students deliver their best potential equipped with academic 
using Excel skills and desirable values to meet the challenging and changing times. What you have seen in the pictures are the active participation and performances of our students in various online activities and competitions inside and outside our school. Thank you so much. Once again, a blessed afternoon. Wow, charm. So from all the sharings of our guest students and uh, our speakers, really, our imagination is the only limit, no? So, uh, magpapasalamat tayo sa kanila, no? Later on ulit. Uh, but I would like to shift to the next part of our program. Isang tanong, isang sagot, dahil wala na tayong panahon. <laughs> okay, so, their question. Ako magpapa, ano yung sila? Tagisan ng talino, pero... Para lang sa isang minuto. Okay? So, we follow the ano, ha? one minute rule. So, here's your question for the three of them. How do you ensure that you get the desired participation from the students? So, you only cite one challenge and state how you resolved it. So, ulitin ko, how do you ensure that you get the desired participation from students. Cite one challenge that you have met and how you resolved it. So, tigi-isa pong sagot lang at tigi-isa ding ano, minuto. So, wag matigas ang ulo. <laughs> but we'll have, you'll have time to prepare for your answer. So, in the meantime, Miss Charm will remind everyone how to answer our evaluation for, for this session. Ms. Chang? Yes, Sir Ed. Thank you very much. No, Para namang pang beauty pageant. Yung actual yes. format ng Q&A. No? <laughs> Talagang tagisa ng galing. Okay, but to everyone else, no, we would also like to invite you to answer the evaluation form. Okay, that you see now on the screen, we will show the QR code which you can scan for the evaluation. And I think our tech team will also give us the link. To the evaluation and this is very important Bob, because this will serve as the basis for the e-certificates that will be sent to you and the live raffle draw okay so make sure that you fill out the evaluation form now at the same time another reminder po, uh, before we started with our event we mentioned about the selfie time okay so maybe you can already do your selfie time no, uh, uh, doing a selfie on screen with any of the speakers or moderators if you haven't done so and use the hashtags we mentioned a while ago. So, Sir Ed, so those yeah, are the reminders. Siempre, importante, you answer the evaluation uh, for the raffle also. Okay, importante. Okay. Yeah. So let's now go to the only question that we have this afternoon for our resource persons. So isang tanong, isang sagot sa loob ng isang minuto. Kung hindi, kick out na kayo sa ano, Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay. So how do you ensure that you get the desired participation from students in Site 1 Challenge and how state how you resolved it so who would like to be the one to first answer the question ano ba si sir jj pwede ba so jj please share yes, uh, please share us okay since our, ako, my answer um, to that question is since our students are already tired of always being graded no in their academic subjects and grading their participation in clubs and organizations might, might turn them off. So we just decided that joining clubs is not required and not graded this time. Plus, of course, we have provided varied opportunities and interesting activities that will cater to their needs and interests. We are just after their well-being this time. So we just want them to explore, learn, and just have fun together. Thank you, Sir JJ. Virtual clap for Sir JJ. Ayan, paano ba yun? <laughs> Virtual nga. No? Okay. Mrs. Lucille, Ayet, Bautista. Let's hear Hello from po. you. 
So, as I can recall, siguro po students' interest is one of the challenges we have encountered so last year. So, like what I've shared earlier, so it is important to create a well-thought-of plan. So, this is to ensure uh, that the students will be interested and excited as well with the things that we want them to accomplish. So, along with the rewards and the prizes, we can, of course, give them variety of activities. So, in other words, we can either go back to the traditional arts and crafts things or skill-based tasks. And we can also have the current trend, which deals with online activities or even online games. Like what Sir JJ mentioned earlier, diba? to get their attention and para medyo chill lang rin po sila. So with this, I believe that we were able to overcome the challenges when it comes to students' attendance and participation in our activities. Yeah, thank you. And our last contestant, Ms. Charlene Villaluna. Thank you, Sir Edward. Uh, to ensure their participation, um, I think the most important is to uh, cater their interest. So, uh, as I have said, um, a happy classroom um, is uh, happen when the students are uh, with highest, no, highest uh, uh, engagement, no. And um, for the challenges, one of the challenges that we encountered for this online distance learning is the connectivity. So what we did is we provide an alternative screen uh, activity, especially for our uh, young learners na, uh, aging seven to five years old, no? because um, we have to consider that our children at, the, at their age are still in the uh, pre-operational -oper, pre stage and it's developmentally is appropriate to expect that they're learning to be extremely uh, to be entirely uh, screen-based. So we can just give them an instruction, then let the students explore and learn uh, offline. And then we can just uh, use our uh, platform to, to submit their videos or photos you know, with their guardians or uh, families at home. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, ma'am. Thank you po sa lahat ng sagutin niyo. Of course, that's an added uh, added to your already uh, enriched presentations, no? So, Miss so Miss Charm, I see questions sa chat box at sa ating iba pang pirag uh, Like, I uh, would uh, like to uh, reach you, answer your questions. So, we will review the recording of this session and we'll capture your questions and try to get back to you through email or your through your uh, respective schools kasi uh, time is of uh, uh, very restricted lang in time natin ngayon okay so we will review the sessions we will uh, get back to your questions through email uh, para po masagot natin okay sa so, ibabato po natin sa mga resource person natin ulit we just don't have so much time right now so miss John, what's next for us Yes, sure, Ed. No, I would say that that uh, that Q and A is very short but sweet, Ika nga, mm -hmm. And thank you very much for moderating that part, no? Because really, time flies so fast, no? Just like that, we are done with the presentations. We are done with our very short Q and A. And I know, no, uh, our viewers might have wanted to ask more questions, but as what you said, we will try to get back to them. So, sir, Ed, no, like our viewers, I think you also learned a lot, no, from this webinar. Yeah, definitely. I was even taking down notes during their presentations. So we heard a lot this afternoon. And so to summarize and put all these ideas together, may we ask Ms. Evangeline De Peralta, our CEAP, NCR Basic Education Committee Auditor, to give her synthesis of the presentations. Good afternoon. Um, can you hear me, everyone? Yes, Ms. Peralta. Okay. Thank you, Edward. Um, it's different because we are in the midst of a pandemic crisis. It's different because we learn more when, we, when there is social interaction. 
in the educational context, social interaction is an effective learning approach. With the impact of the pandemic, the educational sector is very much affected. Now, students learn through remote or online learning by themselves. No face-to-face -face interaction with their teachers and classmates. It's virtual and sometimes it's impersonal. Psychologically, social interaction is part of the normal learning curve, especially for us Filipinos. As mentioned a while ago, we are inherently social beings. Curricular and co-curricular interest and other students' activities in schools play a very important role in achieving the holistic education. The three very inspiring students who shared today underscored common experiences. First, at the initial stage of the implementation of the online learning in the midst of this pandemic, they really felt disconnected, limited, tired, and exhausted. However, they also recognized the efforts of their respective schools to provide the students, to provide them with the student activities, even virtually. And in the process, I like this part, they discovered their better selves. They relearned the values of resourcefulness, creativity, and most of all, self-motivation drawn from their inner strength. Overall, this online remote learning taught them to become disciplined and resilient young people. Every day is always an opportunity for possibilities. There is hope, as mentioned by the young people. Further, the three dynamic resource persons we heard today are all school administrators and directly implementers of student activities in their respective schools. They confirmed that this pandemic caused them loads of stress as they prepared the online learning approach, especially in the initial stage. The following are the common challenges. Number one, this decreasing attendance of students. Second, availability and access of learning devices, which is a real concern and a real challenge. Fourth, identifying the most appropriate learning system and modalities. Fifth, monitoring students in the online approach. Sixth, ensuring the school's identity the vision, the mission, and goals, and of course, the values, and making sure to serve the interests of the students in the midst of this pandemic and emergency. However, going through the process, the schools are able to identify what push may affect you during this remote learning. One, is the extra commitment of moderators. I wanted to underscore that. Giving students loads of motivation and take the leadership roles brings out the best in them. Second, um, crucial um, uh, implement, implementable approach is the maximization of the use of social media. Taking advantage of it as an effective way for the young people to express themselves creatively, like TikTok, as mentioned by uh, one of our administrators who shared. Maximizing online gaming for student activities that is educational and allows critical thinking like Minecraft, as mentioned by JJ. Sports and athletics are still very alive and very much possible. For some, rewarding is still an effective way no, to motivate our students to engage in student activities. International competition is still very much possible. And one crucial part are the real stories and mindful opportunities for students to go beyond the self. It is still possible. Fundraising for those who are in need and outreaches during this time of the pandemic is still very much possible. Through their sharing, we are resolved that schools are very much committed 
providing their students with virtual and online student activities that will continue to deepen their total human development in spite of the pandemic situation. They are committed to continuously explore new, creative, progressive, and relevant strategies to suit the needs of students in these changing times. Therefore, we were able to achieve the objectives of our learning session for today. Today, through this learning session of SEAP NCR DEC, we heard and witnessed real stories that virtual and online student activities are definitely possible. It gives a deeper sense of learning and meaning to our students. It helps them balance the demands of academics and takes care of their mental health. As a network of Catholic schools in the Philippines, we are committed that learning must continue even in the midst of crisis and emergencies. We will continue to adapt to the needs of our students in these changing times. And most of all, we will continue to bring out the best in them, appreciate their gifts, and find creative ways to continue sharing these gifts that God has given them, especially to those who are most in need. Lastly, my dear fellow educators, as we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, let us continue to become instruments of empowering the gifts of our students and accompany them as they live and witness Jesus' love to one another, especially to those who are much in need during this time of the pandemic and emergency. Nawa ay patuloy tayong maging matatag at gabayan ng ating may likha. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Ms. Banji, for capturing those significant insights for us. No? And I can see our chat box, Sir Ed, no? flooding with words of affirmation and encouragement for each one of us. So uh, at this point, we would like to also show our gratitude to our resource persons. May we now call on Mr. Clifford P. Esteban, CAPNCR Basic Education Committee Vice Chairperson for Junior High School to read and award the certificates. On behalf of the officers of the CAPNCR Basic Ed Committee, I would like to express our gratitude to all our audience, especially to our student sharers, resource persons, and moderators. Let me read the text of the Certificate of Appreciation and uh, re Gratitude. The Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines National Capital Region awards this Certificate of Appreciation and Gratitude to all our resource persons, our student sharers, and our two moderators in grateful recognition of their invaluable contribution and service during the CAP NCR 2021 General Assembly Learning Session entitled Pa Extra Naman Tayo, ensuring learner engagement through meaningful co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based programs. Given the 16th day of September 2021, signed by Mr. Jose Ramel E. Javier, the chair of the CAP NCR 2021 General Assembly, and Father Nolan A. K., the regional trustee of the CAP NCR. This certificate is awarded to the following resource speakers. Mr. J.J. N. Jacinto, the director for La Salian Mission of the La Salle Santiago Sobel. Mrs. Lucille Ariel Ariad A. Bautista, the English subject coordinator of Manila Cathedral School and Mrs. Charlene T. Villaluna, the Senior High School Coordinator of the Immaculate Conception Cathedral School. Likewise, to the student sharers, namely Sandra Feliz A. Limhenko of Cainta Catholic College, Maika Erika P. Makalalag of St. Paul's College, Pasig, and Juan Lucas Antonio Buenaflor of St. Mary's College. Thank you too to our dynamic moderators, Ms. Charmaine Esteban from the Immaculate Conception Academy, Green Hills, and Mr. Eduardo Salamera, the principal of Santa Clara Paris School. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.
Okay, thank you, Sir Clifford. Now, before we go to the last leg of our program, we would like to commemorate this event by taking a group photo. So may we request everyone to please turn on their cameras and our tech team to take the photo of the group. Okay, very quickly, let's take our photo po. Okay, tech team, let us know if we're about to start and kung okay na po. Okay, thank you, Sir Marte. Okay, Sir Ed, Sir Ed, now back to you. What's the next yes. part? Yeah, once again, thank you to all our students, sharers, and presenters. San this is Charlene Villaluna. Now, we are happy to know many schools feel affirmed about their student activities, as we can see in the chat box. So we're happy uh, that we are uh, proving to be very resilient uh, uh, amidst the situation. So now, as they say, all good things must come to an end. So may we call on Ms. Lina Mercado, our CEP NCR Bed Committee Archday Season representative for Kovao for our closing prayer. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of God rests upon me. The Spirit of God consecrates me. The Spirit of God bids me go forth to proclaim God's joy and peace. The Spirit of God sends me forth, called to witness the kingdom of God among all nations, called to proclaim the goodness of God to the poor, called to console the hearts overcome with great sorrow, called to comfort the poor who mourn and who weep, called to announce the grace of salvation to all, called to reveal the glory among all people. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Amen. Okay, what a meaningful prayer to end this insightful afternoon. But now we will have our anticipated raffle draw and we will have five winners of Gcash worth. 500 pesos. Okay, oh, sana mama. tama yung sinabi ko. Baka mamaya mag-abono ko, Sir Ed, no? Oh, Sige, 500 pesos. And child, we also would like to say that we also accept donations to the moderators. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto ko yan. Okay, why don't okay. we draw our five winners of GCash? Kasama ba tayo dyan? <laughs> yes, our first winner is Yuan A. Uh, Castrense of De La Salle University Integrated School. Congratulations! Let's go to our second winner. Worth of GCash, Alexander Agudo of San Ildefonso College. Congratulations! Our third winner is Tracy Luan Marie A. Castillo of San Beda College, Alabama. Congratulations, Paul! Wow. You are 500 pesos richer. <laughs> And our fourth winner is Dr. Jesusa Bolotano, St. Joseph's School, Gagalamin, New York City, USA. 
<laughs> Ayos yan, Sir Ed. Okay. O, baka ito na swerte na tayo, Sir Ed. Tayo na ba ito? So, we have one last. Yes, we have one last winner of 500 worth of G-Cash. Okay, the winner is Miss Mian C. Brillantes of Tejero National High School. So congratulations to all our five winners of G-Cash. No, the CAC and CR Secretariat will get in touch with you with instructions on how to claim your prizes. Yes. Okay, so truly it's been an afternoon of great sharings and learning. One final reminder to everyone, we are all expected to attend the Eucharistic celebration on September 18 uh, at 4 p.m. So please join us again uh, for the Eucharistic celebration on September 18, 4 p.m. There will also be a grand raffle in the closing plenary. So... We hope to see you there. May palafal pa. Charm. Huwag tayong ano. Sabi nga na isang bata. O oh, baka doon pwede there na tayo is, manalo. No? Oh, there is still hope. Okay. Kung wala naman, si Father Nolan kaya na ang bahala sa atin. <laughs> okay, Charm. Okay. So everyone, we hope to see you there and not just in the last session of the uh, series of sessions of talks, no, but in the next CAP webinar. So once again, I'm Charm Esteban. And I'm Edward Salamera, and this has been Pa Extra Naman Tayo, ensuring learning engagement through meaningful co-curricular, extracurricular, and interest-based programs. God bless us all, and stay safe. Okay, goodbye, Paul.